Welcome, everybody. How is everyone doing? Happy Friday. Happy December. I had to, like, blah, 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 this morning when I realized it was December 1st. Uh, yeah. This, this year's gone by, like, so fast. Uh... I was just thinking about, um, and we'll talk about this in, in today's session, but I was just reflecting on how much progress this year has brought for me um, and for a lot of people that I know. And I really wanted to go back on my YouTube and watch the video from, it was like my last video of 2022 when I introduced that 2023 was going to be the year of the seven and we are wrapping up the year of the seven. The seven is all about introspection, magic, luck, wisdom, angelic connection, right? Lucky number seven. Um, but I remember on the last day of 2022, the last time I came on Insight Timer, we pulled some cards and I asked for a message for 2023. And it was the Stellar Gateway Chakra activation. So your Stellar Gateway activation, or your Stellar Gateway, is your Stellar, my goodness, your Stellar Star Chakra, or your Stellar, whatever, it's above. So you have your Crown Chakra that's on the top of your head, and then you have your Soul Star, which is like a foot above, and then the Stellar Gateway is, I don't know, two or three feet above. So it was the activation of that like higher realm um, and it just really had to do with like instant manifestations for 2023. And my goodness, if this hasn't been a magical year, I don't know how else to describe it. So I cannot believe that it's already December. So we'll see what, what December brings. Let's see who's here. Hello, Elena and Lori. Happy Friday, Christine. Hello, Jill and Nicole. Hi, Greg, Lori. Jackie says hi. Yeah, it's been a crazy fast year, but time flies when you're having fun, right? Hi, Carrie. Nice to see you. Make it a great day always. Good morning, Melinda. Trina is from California and it's her first time. Welcome, Trina. Nice to meet you. Um, I often forget to introduce myself, so I'm Jackie Mancuso. I'm joining you guys from Northern Illinois. Um, here we are going to talk about the astrology in the sky right now and we'll pull some oracle cards to channel advice for how to best utilize whatever is happening in the sky right now. Um, outside of here I do a, a lot of stuff. Um, I have a, a healing type business, a coaching type business. I have a whole bunch of tools that I can use to help people uh, find the best version of themselves. So, uh, but here on Insight Timer, I love to teach astrology and pull some oracle cards. Lori, 23 was better than 22. You know, I agree. And I uh, really think that 24 is going to get even better. And then 25 and 26. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel. So you can just search my name on YouTube. It's a very unique name. I'm pretty easy to find. Or you can go to my link tree. It's in my Insight Timer profile. Click on my YouTube there. Um, I have a playlist called Lectures. And in that playlist is a video that I called The Beginning of the End. Um, I recorded it when I was working a festival this summer. And I talk about all the major astrology transits that are happening up until 2026. I have this like gut knowing that by 2026, the world is going to look vastly different than it did three years ago. Um, the whole 2020 fiasco in our world, it's, it was like the start of a huge turning point. And I feel like 2026 is going to be like when you look back three years from now, you're, you're going to not remember 2020. So that video is on my YouTube channel. It's called The Beginning of the End. And Jackie, thanks for your reminder. She says, this is also time to watch your recording about Jupiter's year-long transit in Taurus from May and how it impacts you based on your natal chart house placement. Um, yeah, Jackie actually took my advice and she re-watched that video yesterday. Um, so in May of this year, 
Jupiter entered Taurus and Jupiter transits for one year. So I recommended, hey, six months from now, you know, when we're halfway through this Jupiter transit, why don't you rewatch this video and see how it's been impacting your life? So Jackie, Jackie, Jackie actually did that and she said that it was pretty mind blowing. Yeah, April, that one's also on YouTube. Um, and it's called Jupiter in Taurus, May 2023 to May 2024. Um, yeah, I'm trying really hard to title my videos in ways that you can search them again. I don't know, but I'm not perfect. Let's see, what else? Hello, John. Can't believe how fast this year has gone by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The creator of Human Design talks about a major shift happening in 2025. New era stuff. There's a lot. It's been a lot for a while. Um... Yeah, we're like in the transition from Age of Pisces into the Age of Aquarius, so that's huge. There's a lot. A lot of different astrologers have a lot of different opinions. Um, and I don't really think that it's the details that matter. I think it's the feeling that everything is different, that everything is changing. Like you cannot argue that the world is vastly different than it was three years ago. Um, all right, so if this is your first time with me, the way that my lives go is that we re like I'll introduce the astrology. I'll start talking about Mercury and Capricorn. I'll talk for maybe 10, 15 minutes about what to expect. And then I do group oracle readings and they are always just like super spot on. They always align directly with the astrology. They always align with what we all got going on. Like attracts like. So if you're here, you're vibrating at a similar level as the rest of us. So just just know that this is going to be this is always pretty cool. Good morning, Anik and AJ. So today, Mercury enters Capricorn. Mercury is going to be in Capricorn, sort of. We'll talk about this, but from December 1st today through February 5th, that's when he'll finally move on into Aquarius. But Mercury is going to spend this two month chunk in Capricorn uh, because he has a retrograde in the middle. So Mercury retrograde is coming up. It starts on December 12th and he'll be retrograde until January 1st, which I think is just so beautiful. Um, I don't believe in the Gregorian calendar. I feel like our month system is made up and it's skewed and I don't like it, but whatever, it's the program that we chose. Um, and I think it is just pretty coincidental that Mercury stations retrograde on the first of the year. Um, side note that Jupiter will be stationing direct, or sorry, I meant Mercury stations direct on the first of the year. Jupiter will also be stationing direct the day before on New Year's Eve. So this is going to be a pretty cool like blast into 2024. Uh, I digress. So Mercury's in Capricorn starting on today. His retrograde phase is from December 12th through January 1st. Um, and during that time, Mercury will dip his toe back into Sagittarius from the 23rd of December through the 13th of January. So he'll dip his toe back for about three weeks and then spend some more time in Capricorn. But I have live events coming up for all of those uh, stepping stone points. So we'll talk about Mercury retrograde here on the 13th of December. And then we'll talk about Mercury moving back into Cap or moving back into Sagittarius on the 22nd of December. So just for today, we're going to focus on Mercury in Capricorn, specifically while he's stationed direct before he starts his retrograde. So Mercury in astrology is the planet that rules our whole mental plane. He governs how we think, he governs the ideas that come into our mind. Um, he rules how we communicate. And remember, communication is a two-way street. And Mercury also governs how we process information. He's in Capricorn, which is the sign of structure. Capricorn is the builder. Capricorn is the planner. Um, so Capricorn is our cardinal earth sign 
And what that means is that Capricorn is the energy of taking physical initiative, doing something practically to start the thing that you want. So with Mercury in Capricorn, you may start to feel the desire to plan your upcoming year, all in the mental plane, just making your plans. Um, maybe to structure your financial goals. Capricorn being an earth sign is really tied to finances. Mercury and Capricorn might get you feeling like you want to make a plan of action to achieve your health goals. It can help you want to build the life of your dreams mentally. Um, or even planning it out on paper, you know, writing down, um, typing it out, discussing these plans. Mercury is about communication and Capricorn, your plans. So discussing your plans with a partner, uh, with your journal, with your dog, um, just getting it out into the vibrational reality with your voice. Welcome, Kiana. You say it's your first time based in Chicago. Awesome. Nice to see you. Mercury in Capricorn also helps us organize our thoughts, which can be super refreshing since we've had Mercury in Sagittarius for the last three weeks. Um, I think he has been in Sa he's been in Sagittarius since the 10th of this month, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so our thoughts may have been just scattered <laughs> because Sagittarius is mutable fire, constantly changing passions. Mutable are the, the signs that like to change things up. They're adaptable. They're, they're malleable. Um, and fire is all about just following your inspiration, following your passion. So our mind for the last three weeks, let me know if, if this has been you, but you might feel like you've been jumping from thought to thought, <laughs> just following your highest excitement. Uh, this has been impacting me, I guess. My Mercury is in a fire sign. My Mercury is in Aries. So I already have these fiery thoughts. And when Mercury is transiting either through Leo or through Sagittarius, I tend to just jump from like, okay, I'm interested in this, not interested anymore. We're moving on to the next thing. And then I'll exhaust that. And then, nope, I'm not interested anymore. We gotta hop, hop right on. So, but now that the grounded, earthy Capricorn is here helping Mercury, we might have some assistance stabilizing our thoughts, being able to get on a train of thought and stay there. But it's not to say that Mercury and Sag is like a bad thing. Uh, I've noticed myself, like I've been uh, very vocal. Mercury and Sag, which is what we're wrapping up, but to me it's like the storyteller energy, but like the excited storyteller. Like, ooh, I have something to say. Let me take you on a journey through my words. Uh, I've been making a lot of TikToks actually while Mercury has been in Sag, so that's been nice. I feel like speaking. I had that excitement to like share. Anique and Trina have had so many scattered thoughts and ideas. Greg is agreeing. Yep. Elisa Sag here and the struggle is real on the focus piece. That's how you shine though, Elisa. If your sun is in Sagittarius, you shine through that scattered excitement, right? Christine and Christine have Mercury and Capricorn. So Mercury and Capricorn can help us create a roadmap to actually beginning to construct some of those wild, far-fetched ideas that we had while our mind was out exploring in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the wanderer, you know? it's You're supposed to have, like, astrology sets you up. It always goes this way. Mercury always goes from Sagittarius into Capricorn. And I kind of feel like it's because we're supposed to let our mind expand Sagittarius is very expansive, very exploratory, and we're supposed to get these like far out, far-fetched, long-reaching ideas so that when Mercury enters Capricorn, then we can start to make the roadmap. All right, well, what's going to be our first step? You know, we can plan out the whole thing, but that doesn't mean it's going to go according to plan. But at least we can use that excitement of Mercury in Sag use that passionate, fiery energy as we walk into Mercury and Capricorn to start making the first few steps. 
I also want to make note that this December is a loaded month in astrology. There's lots of movement going on. There are lots of aspects, planets talking to each other in the sky from different angles. There's lots of dynamic energy coming up in December because the planets will be playing off of each other a bit more than they have been the rest of the year. And what that means is that, so when planets are receiving aspects from other planets, it's like their energies are blending a little bit. I'm trying to think of a quick way to give this a metaphor. Um, so I guess it's like if you have your light shining through your window, um, that would just be the energy of whatever planet. You just get the light and that's it. But then let's say that there's a planet making an aspect to it. It would be as if you put like a colored filter on your window. So the light is still shining through in its own way, but it's a little bit filtered. It's a little bit um, mutated by the other energy. So I'm trying to think of how to say this the best way, but what I get from this upcoming December is that like, like Jupiter might not feel like Jupiter. Venus might not feel like Venus because there's so much play with the other planets in the sky. Um, so I, I've i foreseen this for the whole year because I have a, so I have this wall calendar that I absolutely love. Um, and it's where I write the major transits for the whole year. This is what I do during Capricorn season. I plan out the upcoming year's astrology and I look at like day by day what's actually happening. Oh my gosh, it makes me feel so good. Capricorn's all about planning. Um, but I have this zodiac calendar. So instead of the, the wall showing January, February, it shows Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and Sagittarius, I've seen this coming from last January that like this is going to be a loaded Sagittarius season. So what I recommend with all of this upcoming change and crazy... Um, I recommend taking these first two weeks of Mercury in Capricorn before he stations retrograde. So remember, Mercury will be retrograde starting on December 12th. So for these first two weeks, while Mercury is still direct and we still have mental clarity, I invite you to begin to mentally consider what you would like 2024 to look like. Just start getting it in your mind. Start writing it down on paper. It's not necessarily time to act on it yet. That'll be a little bit more when the sun moves into Capricorn, when Mars moves into Capricorn. But for now, just start to get your mind going. Start to plan. Um, and you can take it a step further while the sun is still in Sagittarius. We've got the sun in Sag through the rest of December, essentially, through, until the 21st. So while the sun is in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is a mutable sign. Mutable energy gives us the, the capacity to review, to reflect, to make changes, to bring forward. So the next two weeks can be a very beneficial time to reflect on 2023, to observe all of your growth and all the progress you've made this year, there are, like, I hosted my first retreat in 2023, in March, and I think that that was, like, three years ago. Like, I love reflecting because it's often mind-blowing. Um, thinking about even early 2023, I was still doing these Insight Timer sessions from my bedroom on my little laptop, and, like, now I feel so much more professional with just buying a different computer. Um, just reflect, like I invite you to just reflect and see the giant jumps that you've made since last January. Sometimes we get so focused on the future and we get so focused on building and moving forward and doing that we forget how far we've come. So Sun in Sagittarius is a really great time to reflect on everything that you've already created and then draft what you hope your life will look like this time next year. This feels like blending the energies of the Sun and Sag with Mercury and Capricorn. Reflecting and planning. Um, 
And if anyone knows where I can find a 2024 Zodiac season calendar, I haven't been able to find my 2024 yet, so just let me know. Good morning, Debbie. Carrie says, I had a handful of new ideas lately, far-fetched ones. I looked into astrocartography, and I think it said I should live in Buenos Aires. So decided I need to travel there next year, learn Spanish, etc. My mind is a wonderful place sometimes. That is exactly what you're supposed to be doing with Mercury and Sagittarius. You like Sagittarius is the explorer, is the wanderer, it's the it's expansive. Go out. Dream big. Um, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Every time I talk about Jupiter, I talk about Santa Claus energy. Big, generous. I talk about Kool-Aid man energy. Just boom, here I am. And let your mind do that while Mercury is in Sagittarius. We still have, don't forget, we still have the sun in Sagittarius. So this is how we are currently shining is through expanding, expanding our worldview, expanding our, our beliefs, expanding our, um, our reach, right? What we think is possible for ourselves. That's pretty cool. Greg said, Carrie, I lived in Buenos Aires for three months. Wonderful experience. Amazing city and culture. That's so cool. Thank you, Jackie. I will try searching Etsy. Carrie says, oh my god, um, now you're just fueling my ideas. Yeah, you know, it. there's a reason. If you're being called to do it, I'm going to go off on a tiny little tangent because this has been coming up a lot lately. If there is something that you are being called to pursue, I say always pursue it because there's a reason why you're being called in that direction. Now, does that mean that 100% of the time you're always going to reach that goal and achieve that thing? No, but that's the fun of life. It's to follow your highest excitement. Okay, right now I'm excited to explore this new opportunity. And maybe there's something along that path that you're supposed to pick up that maybe you're not supposed to move to Buenos Aires. Maybe you are. Who knows? You don't know until you explore it and you try it. But just know that maybe there's something that you're meant to learn as you're researching this that's going to help you in a different area of your life. So detach from the outcome. It's difficult, I know, but follow the path. The path right now is to find this excitement. And I'm not directly speaking to Carrie. This is for everyone. This is for, if there's ever anything that you have an excitement to do, start doing it. And if it doesn't work out, maybe it's because it wasn't meant to totally come to fruition. Deep, why is life so hard? <laughs> um, life can be hard when we don't have an understanding of why things are happening. I always like to say that life happens for us that nothing is happening to us. Um, and it helps take the seemingly difficult aspects of life and it gives them positive meaning. And I was actually, I, you guys know I love calling myself out. I love when I take my own advice and I take my own medicine. Um, last week, oh my gosh, this was a little embarrassing. I think it was, I think it was Monday. I think it was the day of the full moon which this full moon wrecked me. I was so emotional on Monday. The cards that came out on Insight Timer on Monday, one of them was about um, just cry, just let yourself cry. I cried four times on Monday. I cried four different times on Monday and two of them were because I was so frustrated with the cold and the snow. I despise winter. I've always despised winter. And I was like screaming in my car because there was snow coming up from the hood of my car and I couldn't see and I was driving like 50 miles an hour and I was like, this is so stupid. And I got so mad and I was like frustrating crying about it. Anyway, so then I, I took that anger Right? Instead of like just continuing to, to point my anger at the winter, I finally got to this place and I'm like, what am I supposed to learn from this? Where's the lesson? 
why was I born in Northern Illinois and why have I not been able to get out yet? Am I supposed to be learning how to take cold weather or am I supposed to be learning how to just pick up and go? And I'm, that's what I'm asking the universe this winter. Uh, but I like speaking my intentions out and this came out of my mouth without even trying. When I was cleaning off my truck, I was like, this is my last winter in Illinois and it was channeled. So that's what I'm sending out to the universe. This is my last winter in Illinois and um, check back in next year. See where I'm living in November. See if I'm maybe going to be a snowbird. <laughs> you never know. You never know, but that's it. I'm following my highest excitement to get away from cold weather, to not be negatively affected by cold weather. Ugh. Christine says hi to Darla. That's Darla back there. She's our, our nine-year-old three-legged dog. She's the best. Carrie, when you are grateful for everything, even the hardships, it seems that everything goes well for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it mean when you get consistently sick on the full moons? That's interesting. So full moons do um, affect the waters in our body. That's why we can feel more emotional because the emotional water gets pulled by the moon. So I wonder if there is an emotional thing that hasn't been processed yet. So every time the full moon pulls on you, it's pulling those emotions up to the surface. Winter's not my season. Full moon is intense. I don't know where I want to move to, just somewhere not cold. Try living in Maine. Yeah, no thank you, Carrie. <laughs> um, and it's, I don't know. I'm also close to Chicago and like, I'm not in Chicago. I'm like over an hour away, but the the wind I've heard has a lot to do like the what's that called um and like I've been to Colorado in January and it was three degrees and it felt like when it's 40 here so I don't know Carrie I've looked into astrocartography we'll see we'll see we'll see definitely moving to warmer weather Jackie you can come with us how does your husband feel about moving that could be a whole topic for another day um, he also hates the cold, but he knows how to make the best of it. And I don't know if he's convincing himself to make the best of it because he doesn't think that it's possible to live somewhere else, or if he's actually making the best of it. Um, Chantel, hi Jackie, knew you needed to cry. It's a good release. All I've done all week is cry. I love the snow. Maybe it's because I don't drive, but I love walking in it and making the first footprints in it and making snowmen. Try embracing your inner child with the snow. Uh, yeah, I just don't like prepping to do something. I'm very uh, flowy with my energy. And so if I feel like going for a walk, I just wanna walk out of the house the way that I am. Putting on the socks, changing my pants, putting on extra layers, like that just slows me down. That's what it is. That's why I feel like it just, slows me down. And then if it's not worth it, like I went to a, a chiropractor appointment. Why am I going to layer up? Because I've already warmed up my car, right? So my car's warm because I take care of myself. So why would I layer up to go sit in a warm car to then go to a chiropractor? I, I get massages. So like I'm going to take it all off to get a massage to then put half of it on to get an adjustment to then put it all back on to come back out. Like it just doesn't, it just kills my flow. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start pulling cards now. So we are, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you guys for all the recommendations about snow. Um, so we're gonna ask the Star Codes Astro Oracle how we can utilize Mercury and Capricorn. How can we utilize the mind bringing Bringing structure to the mind, Mercury and Capricorn. So all these readings are always group readings um, and they are always like super on point with whatever you need to know right now. So I invite you to send your energy into this deck and we are asking for guidance from Mercury. We're gonna ask for Mercury. How can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? And I let three cards fall out of the deck for us. Um, and once these three cards fall out, the whole reading is for all of us. So just know that every single card has something that links together that, you know, will be a concise message. 
However, I like to play around with intuitive skills because everyone is psychic. Every single person has psychic skills. Know that. Um, we've been conditioned to forget them because they're powerful and then people couldn't control us if we knew how powerful we were. So I invite you to practice your psychic skills while you're here with this group oracle reading. So after the three cards come out, I always show you guys the back of the deck. So you're going to see the same wheel image three times, but I invite you to see if anything just feels different when I hold up a certain card. Um, don't try too hard. It's I'm, I got to speed up a little bit. I'm running a little bit behind schedule today, so I'm not going to do my full description, but just notice anything. Um, and don't try too hard. And if nothing changes, your intuition is not broken. Um, there's even times that I pull cards and I feel absolutely nothing. So we'll just go with that. All right, so how can we utilize Mercury and Capricorn? Here is the back of card number one. Here's the back of card number two. And here's the back of card number three. Christine, I trust the cards will help you make a decision. They always do. Um, let us know in the chat whatever cards resonated. Multiple cards, no cards, all the cards. And I'll show them one more time just in case. Here's the back of card number one. the back of card number two and the back of card number three. How can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? Nice. Nice. All right, let's see who's working with what. Lisa, one and three. Leah, one and two. Jess, three. Bonnie, three. Jackie, one. Ava, two. Anik, one and three. John, all three. Rebecca, all. Michelle, two and three. Carrie, three. Melanie, two. Win, three. Jill, all. Carrie, one. Katie, I got celebrate soon with three and tingles on my shoulders. Cool. Bridget, two. Beth, two. Chantel, two. Knocking. Three. Sacral chakra. Cool. Christine, one, loud and clear. Jennifer, one, two, three, in that order. Trina, play, light, grounding. Is that what you got for the individual cards? That's cool. Um, Jess, I breathed in sync with you on three. Huh, I wonder if we're releasing a similar thing with whatever that message is. Michelle, three. Jenny, three. Mary Alice, two and three. Angel, one and three. AJ, three. Lori, two and three. And three. Christy, no strong impulses. All of them are for me. CB3, Greg, all three. Nicole, all three. Karen, one. And three in my stomach. Hello, Rev. Um, what? How can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? And I love that, Rev. You didn't see him, but you feel three. Um, and I don't know... I don't know why, it's because I'm supposed to say it. I feel like I want to tell you guys this now. Um, being in this group setting, using your intuition and then like sharing it in the group, this, I love this because it helps enhance the intuition of everyone around you. If you feel like you're copying what someone else does, that's totally normal. Um, it's because you're playing with a new skill. So I just wanted to say that out loud. Like if you feel like you see someone on here and they're like, oh, one represents this for me and two represents this and three represents this. There's a reason why you're noticing that because it's meant for you to learn how to unlock it within yourself. So just trust, just trust whatever comes up. If I held up card number one and your brain went fire hydrant, then like just say it, free association, just say it. Um, especially Mercury was just conjunct the galactic center on Wednesday. So that energy is still strong, strong intuition right now. So I'll just say that. That's fire. Um, yeah. And when we all collaborate and get together, we raise everyone else's vibration. And oh my gosh, I need like a four hour spot here on Insight Timer. 
<laughs> I can go on forever and ever. Would you guys listen to me for two straight hours? I have so much to say. All right, how can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? Oh my gosh, you guys are all saying yes, you'd hang out for two hours? Like everyone's saying yes. I feel uh, appreciated right now. That, okay, cool. Some, I just feel like I always gotta get to the point. Oh my gosh, and that's what's just a thing that I was doing. Good to know. Maybe I can, maybe I'll play with that. Maybe I'll do like a, yeah, Nicole, possible plan for 2024. Mercury is in Capricorn right now. Uh, maybe I could do like a long one once a week or something, you know. Let's look. Did Mercury move in yet? Mercury's technically still in Sag. We have like a few minutes or hours until Mercury moves in. So maybe this is my big idea. Wow. Okay, cool. Monthly mega session. Oh my gosh. Oh, Rev, your birthday's coming up December 9th. Cool. Yeah, maybe I'll consider... I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Bonnie says maybe I need a show. Um, there's talks of Jackie Mancuso having her own internet radio show. I'll just throw that out there. Um, Jackie, I just checked the chart of the moment and this says Sagittarius is, or Mercury is at 29 degrees and 56 minutes of Sagittarius. So it's right there. Um, and I'm very particular and specific. Yeah, so, I mean, long story short, the um, someone reached out to me from Voice America to have my own internet talk radio show. Uh, and I'm pursuing options. And I think crowdfunding will be coming soon because it's a big investment and I'm going to need support. But those are only one hour slots. Like that's very like cut and dry. Like, nope, you get 56 minutes. <laughs> so, cool. Oh, I think I needed this from you guys today. Thank you. All right, so how can we all utilize Mercury in Capricorn? The first card, card number one. I'm gonna move this. Oops. All right, card number one brings us Mars. The uh, keyword for this Mars card is motion. Mars, a mythological god of war and the traditional ruler of Ares and Scorpio, speaks of independence, enterprise, and willfulness, aggression, passion, and defenses, including your body's defenses, such as your immune system. Mars takes 1.9 Earth years to go around the zodiac. So your terrible twos, when you learn to say no and yes and demand things, was the expression of your first Mars return. Mars urges you to take action, any action, but this can get you into trouble. Jump into motion, but stay in the driver's seat and think through the consequences of your moves. Mars is raw energy, and like the motor of a fine sports car, it can take you far if you add wisdom and guidance. Mars wants to develop your strength and bravery, so work out and develop muscles, or rescue the proverbial underdog. Boldly go where you have not gone before and passionately dive into life. Mars loans you the competitive edge to obtain a fiercely desired goal and teaches that for your yes to truly mean yes, your no needs to be respected. Know what you want and don't want and be aware of those desires in the people around you. Learn to fight and fight fairly. Stand your ground with grace and compete against your own personal best. If you are in a difficult situation, it could take real strength and willpower to transform or escape. You may need to dig in your heels so you are not pushed around 
or pull out your sword and draw a clear line in the sand. Do what needs to be done. Just make sure it's the right thing. And then this deck gives us a challenge and a gift of each card. The challenge of Mars is domineering willfulness, misuse of sexuality, anger, belligerence, and a warlike mentality are the shadow side of Mars. Break the momentum if your situation heads downhill. Stop for a moment and think through your next move. The gift of Mars. The higher note of Mars energy manifests as a divine guardian. Your potent inner first responder who is ready to be the hero in a dangerous situation and protects you and yours. How can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? I feel like this is plan mentally planning how you want to use your powerful Martian energy. Mars gives you the energy, the drive, the passion, the ambition to do anything. Like this is your sacral energy. If you guys are familiar with human design, I don't even know if that's like linked, but I feel Mars linked to like sacral energy. This is your drive. This is your motivation planet. This is what makes you want to do like act, do. So utilizing Mercury and Capricorn, maybe making a plan of like what you want your energy to look like. And it doesn't even have to be for the whole year of 2024. You know, maybe that's um, just because Mercury is now in Sag and I'm thinking big picture. But if it feels more um, intuitive for you to plan your action with like one project, plan your action. There you go. Make your plan of action. That's what I get from this card. Let me know what you guys get. Anything different. Carrie says, yes, spot on. Um, if this resonates, take it. If not, leave it. This also made me think if card number one resonated with you, I would look at your natal Mars wherever Mars was when you were born in your natal chart and just see if it's going to have any interactions with Mercury throughout Mercury and Capricorn. Sorry. Um, if your Mars is in Capricorn, Mercury will be, my gosh, words. Uh, Mercury will be conjunct your Mars. If your Mars is in Cancer, Mercury will be opposing your Mars. If your Mars is in Virgo or Taurus, the Earth signs, Virgo or Taurus, Mercury will be trining your Mars, positively trining. And if your Mars is in Aries or, oh my gosh, brain fart, Libra, if your Mars is in Aries or Libra, Mercury will be squaring your Mars. <laughs> if I didn't name the sign where your Mars is, then look into it if you want. Um, but I named the major ones. Conjunction, opposition, square, trine. Um... If you need to hear that again, this replay will be available on YouTube later today. Search my name on YouTube, pretty easy to find. I post all of these replays on my YouTube channel um, because I know I say a lot. A lot comes out in these sessions um, and I'm, I, I'm not gonna slow down my flow and my message. So that's why I record it so that if someone needs to re catch up, you can. So first, how can we utilize Mercury and Capricorn? Plan your action. Second card, how can we utilize Mercury and Capricorn? Card number two brings us the Imam Coeli. It's card number 38, if you like numbers. And the message is root. Imagine your spine extends down into the earth like a taproot the strong central root under a tree, through the earth to a point on the sun's path below. Latin for bottom of the sky, the Imam Coeli, or I see, points to the memories and experiences that fed your first roots, your early home life, 
your family's traditions, and your biological and emotional heritage. Look to the roots. Think about what makes you feel at home and secure. What creates sanctuary for you? Investigate the foundations and become conscious of the traditions and assumptions that underlie this situation. This is Star Codes Astro. Lean into habits that help you feel secure and grounded. If you enjoyed your childhood, family traditions can help you feel safe and strong in a storm. If you grew up in chaos, you may crave the opposite and so create your own quiet sanctuary. <laughs> if you grew up around arguments, arguing with people at home may seem normal to you, but that may not be the case for your housemates. So you may need to learn to present your points in a more transformative, less combative way. The IC also speaks of deeper roots, the spiritual, religious, or philosophical underpinnings of your early life. Just as a fish doesn't notice the water it swims in, it can be hard to see the spiritual assumptions you, uh, that you swam within as a child. These philosophical underpinnings could give you a deep connection to spirit or leave you feeling restricted and judged. Whether they imbued you with unconscious habits or were that from which you rebelled, until you examine these deep roots, they will define your foundational paradigm. The challenge for the Imam Koali? Unconscious patterns from your personal history may underlie the situation and need evacuation. The gift? Build roots of your own. Feel your spine extend like a deep taproot of a tree into the ground. Feel the strength of the earth pulsing up through you, holding you strong through any storm. A lot coming through with this card. What is resonating the most strongly with me is that this keeps talking about digging your taproot down and Mercury is in Capricorn, an earth sign. So grounding. Mercury in Capricorn really wants us to ground deep into our upbringing, into our home, into our... Um, what was programmed into us as a child. I I love calling myself out. Something was just happening earlier today. What was it? Oh, I got called out on another deck about how I feel, st when I feel, I, I feel trapped in relationships. And so when the other person aggravates me, I just treat them badly. And it, it was like, damn it, I don't want to hear that. But that's so true because that's what I was taught growing up. I, when I was growing up, I didn't learn how to communicate when we had beef. You just tuck it under the rug and then you you just act in a way that's pissed off and resentful all the time. Um, you know, and the more that you're conscious of what programming was put into you, the more you're able to start to heal it and work your way out of it. Does that make sense? So how can we utilize Mercury and Capricorn? Ooh, that feels like Ah, grounding into your thoughts. Capricorn grounding into Mercury your thoughts about your upbringing. Um, I, I want to see how the third card plays into it, but what I'm also getting from like step by step is um, taking action to get your home life in order during Mercury and Capricorn. And it could be your current home, your current sanctuary where you go to retreat, or it could be taking action on fixing family stuff, family of origin stuff. So number two is heavy, big reality check, Nicole. This one resonated with me big time, Rev. Wow, I didn't choose this card, but it resonates. Ava says I'm working on home improvement. Card number two resonates with me. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I go super deep with all these cards, right? I get to like the root of the problem. I love shadow stuff, um, but it, it can be something as like lighthearted as that. Like, oh, Mercury in Capricorn, let's make a mental plan about how I want to update my house. That's totally <laughs> cool. Chantel grew up in chaos. Great insight to why I need time alone and thrive when I do this. 
still need to explore unconscious patterns. I heard knocking for this card. I guess I feel like I'm being knocked down when I don't spend time alone in my own sanctuary. I resonate with that so much. I just, so this, I call this my Reiki room. This is our, in our basement. Um, this is like my place of business. And I've had this room for two years. Um, and before that, I never took time by myself. I also grew up in chaos. I also grew up, I, I'm the baby of 10 kids, okay? Which, that's enough said. There was always something going on. There was always like something distracting me. And once I started taking this time to slow down and create my own peace and make my reality the way, like structure my reality the way I need it, oh my gosh, huge changes. Could be your home within, yes, I love that. Angel said this is exactly what I'm working on. Can't wait for card number three. And we'll do a um, culminating card as well from a different deck. Trina, we need to move this month. I love it. Just deep resonance. We all need to clean out our basements, literal and mental. Yes, they always interchange. If you have a shit room in your house, like if you have a room where you just put all your stuff, I promise you, once you start clearing that out, you're going to feel all this mental clutter and all this energetic clutter just leaving your whole life. Make a plan to get my home in order to move. Don't take anything not needed. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the baby of 10. Mixed family Brady Bunch. Like literally Brady Bunch. My mom had three girls. My dad had three boys and a girl. And then they got together and then they had three more. And I'm like the baby, baby, baby. Oldest of six. Yeah, I'm sure it was pretty hectic and chaotic there, especially being in charge of everyone else. I do love my, my placement as the baby. It, it's not, you know, I did get blamed for a lot. I was kind of like the family scapegoat, but I still get away with not doing anything. I don't bring anything to family holidays. I just show up and it's wonderful. <laughs> uh, hour to see some of you later, three through three going live. Cool, cool, cool. All right, card number three. How can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? And after we read this card, I'm gonna pull one more from a different deck, so stick around. Thanks, Jill. Jill says you have enough to bring to the table. Right. I was, that, yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, how can we utilize Mercury in Capricorn? Card number three is card number 55. The message is transits, climate. I love that image. It feels like very deep rest, that image. The planets are always moving through time and space, always spinning around us. Okay, sorry, before I start reading this, I was literally talking about all the heavy transits that are coming in December, which starts today with Mercury in Capricorn. I just, I, I love this work. The planets are always moving through time and space, always spinning around us. When those planets form geometric relationships to one another, they create transits, the astrological weather conditions of the day that affect us all. When a moving planet forms a geometric relationship to a planet in your natal chart, that transiting planet can act like a guest who enters your house, sits in your kitchen, or sprawls in your living room. It activates that part of your existence. If that transiting planet talks to your Mars, it activates your warrior nature and fight or flight response. I, I don't think I've ever got this card from this deck. Um, so I had no idea that I was gonna talk about something transiting Mars, which is what I got from when I pulled this Mars card and I said, hey, if Mercury's gonna be working with your Mars, I. Ah. If it talks to your moon, it initiates a story centered around your home, your family, and how you nurture yourself. <sighs> the situation is in flux, and the surrounding conditions are changing. Stay alert, aware, and be ready to respond to incoming dangers and opportunities. Some people are moving in, others are leaving. New opportunities open, 
and old chapters close. Listen to the grapevine for changes in personnel or economic conditions. You are not in control of those elements, but you can make the most of these changes and dance with fate. People that walk into your life now may be karmically important. Either the relationship will last a long time, or it may be short, pithy, and teach you a valuable lesson. It can be helpful at this point to look at the transits in your natal chart. There is no volume control on this card's energy. Transits may trigger a small change in the personnel around you, or it could signal a shooting star that blazes across your life and turns your direction entirely. You have choices though. Ask for grace and guidance when responding to the changing circumstances. The challenge of this card is wild cards are in play. You are not in control of who or what now brushes your life, and that can be scary. The gift, even though life is an ever-moving circus and you do not control the people and events coming into your life, know that you are in complete control of your response to the transit. Choose wisely. Um, I liked the last sentence. Um, you have choices, though. Ask for grace and guidance when responding to the changing circumstances. So how can we utilize Mercury and Capricorn? I feel like this card is just giving a nod to all the transits that are going to be happening in December. It's going to be volatile. Um, is volatile a bad thing? No, it's going to be changing. There's going to be a lot of stuff moving around, a lot of, a lot of chaos. Um, and chaos doesn't have to be bad, right? It's just moving parts. But utilizing Mercury and Capricorn can help us keep our mind stable, keep our mind structured, keep our thoughts structured. So utilizing Mercury and Capricorn to compartmentalize your thoughts, I'm feeling like you're going to know when you're having anxiety and you're going to be able to call yourself out like, nope, this is an anxious thought. It's not true. This is just the part of me that's trying to keep me safe. Um, does that make sense? That's what I got from that hardcore. And let me know. Let me see what else you guys are talking about. I just read something about why travel time will not appear as we imagine because of the way the planets move. Oh, that's interesting, Bonnie. Christine, 55 is a really significant number to me. And when I saw this card, my eyes, my eyes started welling up with tears. This card's helping you release something. Um, we had two double numbers today. We had a 22 and a 55. And they're almost like inverse. Like if you reverse the two, it kind of looks like a five and vice versa. Yeah, Mars again. Wow, I've had major triggers with boundaries and fight or flight this week. Mm -hmm. IT teacher Rebecca Joe Rushdie does wonderful decluttering lives. Awesome, Alice, thanks for sharing. Mercury and Capricorn is in your natal chart, now this. So I, I, I mean, this is really calling you to look at what Mercury is going to be doing with your natal chart during Capricorn season. Oh, I don't like going over time, but you guys said that you'll listen to me for two hours. So um, what you can do, if you can, if you know enough about astrology to get yourself in trouble, okay, you don't need to be like a cool, vast astrologer to do this, but you can look up your natal chart. The website that I use is astro.com. So this is the website that I can teach you how to use. So you go to astro.com, put in all your birth information. Um, then when you're looking at your birth chart, there's a button on the top right and it says with transits. And if you click that with transits button, it's gonna give you the transiting planets in green on the outside of your chart. Uh, I'm a visual person, so that helps me when I can see exactly where the planets are. And Mercury is the little guy with the hat. He has his little, like, two little, he has, like, rabbit ears on. 
So you look for Mercury and you can see if in Capricorn, there's going to be a 30 degree chunk of Capricorn to see if you have any planets there. And just know that Mercury is going to be transiting over those planets. Then what you can do, because the internet is a great tool, you can open an internet browser and type in Mercury transiting planet, whatever planet, um, and just do a little bit of research and take what resonates and leave the rest. And that might help you create a plan when the energy arises. Does that make sense? Mars is tied to the root chakra and the third chakra, solar plexus, and our second card was root. A grounded plan of action, Greg? 100%. Yeah, I like, I like that a lot. Resonates so much. Not in control of people who come in and out. This may cause disruption to my safety and security. Safety and stability, sacral and root chakra. Yeah, that's so interesting. Looks like a lot of meditation is needed during December. I like that. Stay grounded during the transits, but still take action. Grounded action, not explosive reactive reaction. <laughs> Thank you so much for your donation, Jess. I appreciate that. Um, if you guys are enjoying today's session, if you'd like to offer an exchange of energy, donations are always appreciated. Um, we're going to pull one more card from a different deck. Thank you for sticking with me. We're going a little bit over time today. Uh, and while I transition, I'm just going to share with you guys. So my husband and I have been doing shadow work together. Um, I'm so proud of him. I like can't get over this. He's a He's a blue collar mechanic dude, like never thought about spirituality and whatever. So we bought the, the TikTok famous shadow work journal and we've been doing it together weekly and he is just blossoming. But the other day we did um, a prompt and it was asking about like, what makes us feel tense and what do we do when we feel tense? And um, what came out for me is I feel tense when I'm rushed. And when I was journaling all of this, I was kind of pointing my finger at him. Not with words, but you know, like the message was back there. Like, you know, I feel rushed. And when, when people rush me, I try to c control the situation this way. And he heard me out and he, and he, you know, like he let me say all my things and get all my feelings out. And then he's like, do you think you rush yourself? And I didn't want to hear that because it's so true. And that was it. And I figured that out like two days ago. No one's rushing me. I'm rushing myself because I assume that you guys have somewhere to be because I sign up for one hour and I feel like once my one hour is done, I gotta get out. Um, and it's been interesting to learn how to take up time, how to take up space, how to slow down. I'm a slow person. I'm a slow person and the more I embrace that about myself especially growing up in this technological 21st century i don't need something instantly i never have but i grew up in it and i was taught that you had to like go 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 it's time to move on to the next thing you need that instant gratification go get happy from that go get happy from that um and yeah it's difficult to adjust to slow down but i really appreciate when other people slow down like, I will let people talk and talk and talk. Like, I'm, and uh, maybe not so much anymore, all the time, but like, like if someone's on a stream of thought, I don't interrupt them. I just let them have their stream of thought. And like, I feel like I'm not allowed to do that. Wow, where's all this coming from? <laughs> okay, we're gonna pull from the Tree of Life Oracle, by the way. Um, let me read some comments. Anik's a slow person too. Carrie says, wow, so me. Love the insight, Jackie. And if anyone needs to leave, they can. Okay, yeah, thanks for the reminder, Christy. Paul the Sag, tell it like it is. I appreciate it. It's so refreshing. Me too. I can take all morning to be ready for the day sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm rushed, but I'm rushing myself. Which, you know, like, I knew that in the back of my mind, I knew that, but then hearing it from someone else, it was just like a, oh man, okay, he's right. 
I do the same thing. There's a deep fear that taking up time or going slower than usual will evoke anger in others. So when I know someone is waiting for me, it's just panic. Oh my gosh, Christine. That hit so hard. Because, yeah. Oh. I need to do some reflection on that. Thank you, Christine. I will donate on your page, Jackie. You deserve energy exchanges for your intuitive energies you give freely to this beautiful group. Thank you, Christine. Pav, thank you for speaking about taking the time to honor our slowness. You needed to hear it. Angel can completely resonate. Cool. Cool. I keep getting these messages like the more I have a lot to share, but then I rush myself and I feel like I don't have the time. Yeah, and then like, yeah, whatever. You're allowed to be who you are. We all are. Tesla, oh, take the best and leave the rest. I'll Tesla the best. Tesla is the best. We would have had free energy if money didn't get in the way. Maybe book a live for an hour and a half if you finish early. No biggie. Yeah, you know, I used to book the longer live but I can't remember why I cut it down to an hour. But I do, it's like my it's like my flow also. Like I end my live around 9.15 and then I get it on YouTube and then I do all my recappy things and I, you know, and then I um, usually have an appointment right at 10 o'clock. So it gives me like that little 45 minute buffer. And I do, I structure my, I structure the shit out of my time. And I don't know if I like it or not. I'm trying to figure out if I like it or not. Cause like sometimes it's great because then it's like concise and I get everything done in the morning and then I have the afternoon to just like flow and do whatever. But then other times, like I don't want to, I don't want to work at 10 o'clock. I just want to journal for another two hours. It's fun. It's a fun um, switcheroo. Katie, I rush to make other people happy, avoid anger, etc. It's codependency stuff for me. Damn. You mean I'm not perfect? This is news to me. <laughs> Just kidding. Jackie, so great. I really appreciate this card. What you would say is, what would you say is a good affirmation to associate with card 53 or 55? Um, I remain grounded and centered and calm while the world changes around me. I choose to remain, whatever word resonates, grounded, centered, calm, stable. I choose to remain while the world around me changes for my highest good. Because it's always happening for your highest good. Thank you for asking, Jackie. Christine, honestly, your energy is so beautiful. Anytime you're willing to spend sharing it with us is really a gift. Thank you, Christine. That was really nice. See you, Christy. Nicole, I schedule my time too, and as soon as something doesn't go as planned, my anxiety goes through the roof. That's been something that I've been working on, and that's actually, thank you for saying that, um, because that helped me reflect that like I used to get more anxious when things wouldn't go according to plan, and that's something that I've been able to detach from. Um, and that came from literally affirmations. 2023 for me has been the year of affirmations. They are everywhere in my life. I started this year by finishing the Law of Attraction book by Abraham Hicks. Um, and that was all about affirmations. So affirmations have helped me let go of when things go when things don't go according to plan because I always know that I'm in the right place at the right time. I always know that everything that's happening now is happening for my highest good. I always know that things always work out. Um, I had to, I, I reprogrammed my subconscious by blasting these affirmations around my house. I have post-it notes places. I have whiteboards with changing affirmations. I have signs posted on my doors. And I don't care. I don't care if I look like a crazy person. I want people to come to my house and see like, oh, she has all these really positive sayings around her house. And she seems like a really happy person. Maybe that can help me, you know? Like I stopped caring if people um, think weird about me because it's working for me, so. All right, let's pull a culminating card. Thank you, Jackie. She says she'll donate on my page because she's an iPhone user. I want you to get the most you can. I appreciate that a lot. I really do. Tree of Life Oracle. Um, this 
Deck, I want to ask for advice while we review 2023. Um, if you were not here in the beginning, what we talked about was that this time with Mercury in Capricorn and the Sun in Sagittarius, we have this uh, mutable light that wants to reflect in review while our brain plans for the future. So while we review 2023, we can see the patterns and see the growth that we created throughout 2023 so that we can plan what we desire for 2024. Yeah, Jackie, please do. Write affirmations everywhere. Everywhere. So um, here we're asking for advice while we review 2023 from the Tree of Life Oracle. And that was instant. Kira. All right, so the card that came as advice while we review 2023 is the element of fire. Element of fire. Passion, enthusiasm, creation. I just, I, I brought this up because we're in Sagittarius season. Sagittarius is mutable fire. Excuse me. The mighty guardian of the south, Jin. King of Fire, it's D-J-I-N, I might be saying that wrong, rules the fire signs of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The magical tool of fire is the wand, and the overseer archangel is Michael. Jin presents himself as a powerhouse of energy, carrying a fiery staff or wand, and surrounded by living sparks of light. The S-shaped salamanders of his element, fiery sparks of creation awaiting his command. What do you need to lift to give power and enthusiasm to? You can get yourself fired up should you choose. Dance, work out, go for a brisk walk, do star jumps in your leggings and headband. Do whatever works for you, but know that energy creates more energy. Link with the air element and talk yourself into doing it if you have to. But use fire to break through procrastination and stagnation. However, beware. Fire may have you feeling overzealous, running ahead before you've learned the route or seen the pitfalls, and too much of it can cause you to stumble. Also, anger is attached to fire. Anger isn't necessarily a bad thing, but mismanaged, it can be destructive. Know if you're feeling the first burst of a moment that needs change, or the longer burn of something that calls for more creative solutions. Someone who is fiery could enter your life now. They'll be easily spotted. But are they there to motivate you or annoy you? <laughs> Either way, a new dynamic will begin. To activate this card, if you have a solid fuel burning stove or a fire pit, light a fire and spend some time looking into the flames. As they dance, allow your gaze to soften. Use the fire as a meditation. Let your mind create images and insights from this element. If that's not possible, get fiery colors into your life, red, orange, and bright yellow. I need the fire under my ass card. Well, here it is. Get passionate about reviewing 2023. Um, and what I also got from this card is to choose to shine the light of your fire onto the positives. Look to what the best parts of 2023 were. Light them up a little bit. You know, shine your light on them. Get excited about them. And then utilize Mercury and Capricorn to make the plan to continue in that, that um, trajectory of beauty, you know? Um, I love that this card also brought up fire gazing as a meditation because I'm way all about this, like, society has gone too far. Um, we need to go back to the basics. I'm a Taurus, guys. Like, 
little house on the prairie, Bonnie. That's what we all need. Um, think about back in the day, like whatever that means to you, native times, tribal times, even like freaking like 1800s. What did they do to, when they talked at the end of the night, they gathered around the fire and not everyone's talking the whole time, right? So what, what are you doing when you're listening? You're gazing at the fire. You're letting your mind just like dissolve into the burning flames. Um, it's a very meditative process. You can do it inside with a candle. Um, you can do it at a fireplace. You can do it on a stove. You can do it in a, a fire pit. Um, but just watching fire. And actually, what's really cool, I ju this just, I've never like thought of this before, but um, sending whatever you don't want into the fire to figuratively be burned away. Um, because your visualization is so powerful. Don't forget how powerful visualization is. Um, I was this close the other day to recording a whole track, just pulling it, or a whole course, just pulling it out of my butt, doing a visual, an astrology visualization um, to create your, your dream life with visualization. But then my fire burnt out quickly. I had a spark and then I tried and I was like, no, I need to prep for this. And I threw it out. Um, advice while we review 2023. If you need some, like excitement to do the process because you know maybe you're in a negative state maybe you've been having a pretty crappy few weeks months um and you're like i don't want to look back at 2023 I, it hasn't been the greatest i don't want to move your body do something physical action go for a walk do some jumping jacks um it regulates your nervous system too when you when you move around somatic release is huge uh and that can maybe help you get like kink kink out whatever energy is holding you back from reviewing and then focus on the good love that recommendation going to light my fire pit and meditate thank you Chantel. love it one of my best moments spending the silver anniversary with my husband roughing it on our first camping trip that's so fun bonnie is gonna make sure we get firewood this weekend oh bonnie you love the fire I have to tell the story. I have to tell the story. When I hosted my retreat, it was um, five women, myself included. And I was so excited to do a drum circle because I'm a natural musician. I was a musician my whole life. Drum circles just give me like the, ugh, like it's like, oh, so good. Um, and I was like stoked. And so I had all these drums for everyone and we were all drumming and it was great. Um, and Bonnie, Bonnie was there. She was just sitting there like mesmerized by the fire and she could not coordinate hands and she's just staring at this fire and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't. Like this is just sucking and so perfect. Please, please go meditate by that fire. That's amazing. Maybe it's saying write your 2023 and burn it. I like that as well, Chantel. See, you guys have great ideas. Yeah, you can do um, like fire rituals. You can write down things from 2023 that you don't want to take with you in 2024. Burn it. Burn it. With intention. With intention. Okay. Thank you guys so much for hanging out for an extra 20 minutes. I really appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate the positive reinforcement about me using my voice. I needed that today. So thank you. Um, thank you guys for the donations. They are always appreciated. They help me continue to do this. They help me continue to share my time. And I will be back on Monday. Yeah, Monday, Venus is entering Scorpio. And then next week, I'm also here on Wednesday. So the 4th and the 6th. I don't think if there's anything else I need to tell you guys. I don't think so. This replay is going to go up on YouTube. Bonnie is going to put the text recaps of the Oracle cards in our spiritual community. So if you want to join the group that I have on Insight Timer, if you haven't done that yet, you can hop into my Insight Timer profile where um, the group will be right there. It's called Our Spiritual Community. The recaps always go in there, and then that's just a place where we boost each other up. It's a, it's a great little community, so feel free to join that. Um, 
what else? If I didn't even talk about this at all today. If you guys don't know that I do this kind of stuff off of Insight Timer, my link tree is in my Insight Timer bio. Uh, my whole business is donation-based. So I do astrology readings, I do oracle readings, I do Akashic Records readings. Um, check me out, see if there's anything that you would like to try. And then whatever value you take from our time together is all I ask in exchange. Um, and then I also do like, intuitive coaching. So if you just need help and you don't know where to start, let's have a conversation and we'll figure it out. Um, I'm just here to help. So that's it. I want you to know that. And Darla helps sometimes too. That was actually really cool. She helped me with a client one time and then afterwards I was petting her and then she like told me what she did and it was, it was pretty cool. Um, animal healing and animal communication is another thing I can help with that isn't like posted really anywhere. Yeah, I don't know. It's just if you like my energy and you think you want to work together, reach out and we'll figure something out. Follow your highest excitement. Detach from the outcome. Remain grateful. That's it. I am in the flow, Carrie, and I don't want to stop it. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Have a wonderful Mercury in Capricorn. I'll see you on Monday for Venus in Scorpio. Sending love to all. Namaste. Take care.